Okay, so the Oklahoma Sooners win. And listen, Oklahoma fans, they're not happy with the win because of how the defense played in that game. But Jeff Lebby and the offense absolutely were scorching hot. And not too far after the game recaps, listen, Jeff Lebby had this to say about the Mississippi State rumors. To me, there's a time and a place for all of that. We focused on the now. We'll see about that. Venables said this about Jeff Levy's candidacy for Mississippi State. I want all of my guys to have the opportunity, and I will support them any way I can. I'm for all my guys having opportunities. Does it seem like Jeff Levy's on his way out the door? We're here to actually talk about that today, and we're here to talk about the potential or is Jeff Levy the next head coach at Mississippi State? And we're going to talk about the potential replacements for Oklahoma at the offensive coordinator position because it's time to start talking about it. But before we do that, need to hear from y'all. Need to hear what y'all's thoughts are. Just make sure you hit that like and you hit the subscribe button. Join the discussion. Let me know who you guys would want to see as Oklahoma's next offensive coordinator if Jeff Levy really takes the head coaching job. So, in our college football collective group chat today, I'm sitting here talking back and forth with some of the guys, and I'm like, hey, I just had someone text me saying that Jeff Lebby is putting a staff together? Like, is this true? And, of course, everybody was like, oh, well, you know, I don't think he's got the job yet. He hasn't got the offer. Well, someone chimes in and says, oh, no, dude's got the offer. Dude's got the offer. Dude might be putting a staff together. Obviously. Who would be one of the first guys that Jeff Levy would go after? Joe John Finley, right? So if you're an Oklahoma fan, you're looking at it and going, dang, we about to potentially lose two coaches on the offensive side of the ball? Yes. And there's a good chance that Jeff Levy's also going to go get a guy like maybe a Kel Gundy to be a part of his staff because, well, hey, he's just that good. So I look at it and I say, if Oklahoma were to lose Jeff Lebby here in the next week or two weeks to Mississippi State, because I think if this is real and this is actually going to happen, which at this point it feels like all signs are saying Jeff Lebby is the next head coach at Mississippi State, it's just not official yet, right? The way that Venables is talking, the way Lebby is talking, that's just how it sounds. So I'm taking a look at it, and I'm saying – Will Rogers hit the transfer portal? You get Lebby, you have an opportunity to get Will, Will Rogers out of the portal. And Will Rogers has not had a great season. 59.9% completion percentage, 1,626 yards. 65 has been his longest, 12 touchdowns, four interceptions. Will Rogers is a guy that likely is going to go transfer to a program like an Oregon, like a USC like a uh, Florida or a place like that and make an impact from day one and continue to increase his draft stock per se. And so with Jeff Lebby leaving to go be the head coach at Mississippi State, from what it seems, I look at it and I say candidates for Oklahoma. Now, I want you guys to stay to the end because I've got some non-Oklahoma coaching Non-Oklahoma coaches that could be a candidate for o OC, so stay tuned for that. And I got some honorable mentions in here. But the first one you got to talk about is Matt Wells. Matt Wells, <clears throat> he's from Oklahoma, and he's kind of been around college football. 1997 to 2001, he was a coach for pretty much everything on offense outside of the offensive coordinator for Navy. He spent time at Tulsa, New Mexico, Louisville, back at New Mexico, Utah State for a while, where he ended up becoming the head coach from 2013 to 2018. Went and had a stint at Texas Tech as the head coach of 2019 and 2021. And now he's at Oklahoma as an offensive analyst. And overall, record 57 and 51. Bowl record, 2-2. Two and two. When you look at Matt Wells on the recruiting trail, not someone that just like, he isn't a guy that, has like landed a ton of people. It doesn't blow you off the stat sheet. So then you turn to a guy like Seth Luttrell, who is also on this staff. He played running back here at Oklahoma from 97 to 2000. Here is an offensive analyst right now. In 2002 to 2004, 
uh, he was a general, uh, a grad, a graduate assistant uh, at Kansas from 2000 to 2004. 2005 to 2008 was the running backs coach at Tech. 2009, he was at Arizona. And he was at Arizona in different roles as co-offensive coordinator and offensive coordinator in 2010 and 2011 as well. 2012, 2013, he was at offensive coordinator at Indiana. Then in 2014 to 2015, he was assistant head coach and offensive coordinator at North Carolina. And then in 2016 to 2022, he was the head coach at North Texas. And then previously now the offensive analyst at Oklahoma, 44 and 44 record as a coach, 0 in 5 in bowls. So you look at it and again, you look at his recruiting resume and you go, well, it's not someone that blows you off. So, right? so do either of those guys make a splash? Probably not, but they're safe hires. We know what they can do on offense, especially Matt Wells, kind of explosive. Somebody I want to talk about that maybe everybody's going to forget about. Emmett Jones, your current wide receivers coach and passing coordinator analyst, whatever they call it. Uh, listen, he on modern North Texas. Uh, he's played at Texas Tech and at UTEP. Played wide receiver, so he knows that position really well. We know he has a desire to, to be a head coach at some time. So maybe taking this job as the offensive coordinator is the step he needs to be able to go out there and land an offensive coordinator job or a head coaching job. So from 2001 to 2004, he was the uh, Seagoville High School uh, Texas assistant. Then he was at Dallas Lincoln High School in 2005. 2006 to 2013, he was at Skyline High School in Texas. 2012, 2014, South Oak Cliff High School. If you notice, he has a lot of connections there in the Dallas area. 2015, Texas Tech, player development. 2016, 2018, wide receivers coach for AM. 2019, wide receivers coach for Kansas, back when Les Miles was there. 2020, 2021, wide receivers and passing game coordinator. And then in 2022, Texas Tech is the wide receivers coach. And now he's at Oklahoma. Uh, overall head coaching record, 30 and 8. Listen, or well, he wasn't really a head coach, but just a coach in general. You look at Emmett Jones and you've seen what he's been able to do with the wide receivers for Oklahoma in a short amount of time. You know Emmett Jones could probably help run this offense at some level. And I think if you hire Emmett Jones, you don't slow down in recruiting. And in fact, if you get a good developer on the quarterback side, I think you could really make a lot of strides on the recruiting trail, as well as getting Emmett Jones the ability to go out there and call plays. Now, my next and final candidate that Oklahoma fans need to watch out for, and although this one might be a long shot, I think it's one that if you're Oklahoma, maybe you really push for if you're not looking to hire any of these guys internally. And it's going to be Warren Ruggiero out at Wake Forest. And you might ask me, who the hell is this guy? Well, let me tell you this. Him and Dave Clawson, who have been together for 13 years at Wake Forest, have one of the best RPO games in the country. Wake Forest has had a top 25 scoring offense in four of the past six seasons. Now, again, doesn't blow you off the sheet in terms of what he's been able to do recruiting-wise, but in terms of the kind of offense that he runs, extremely, extremely intriguing for Oklahoma to maybe go out there and test the waters on Warren Ruggiero. Now, again, I think it's going to be harder because you've got to be able to pry him away from Dave Clawson, and they've been together for so long, you feel like there's probably some sort of chemistry there that it's going to be, it's going to take a probably a good amount of money to probably pull them away. So I look at some honorable mentions, guys that you might mention that I just don't think Oklahoma is going to go after, right? And I think the first one we got to talk about is Joe Brady. Currently with Buffalo Bills, doesn't like to recruit, but I know some of you guys are going to throw that name out there because of what the 2019 LSU team did. Additionally, you got to look at Garrett Riley. Now, I know a bunch of people probably don't want Lincoln Riley's brother here, but if Oklahoma were to go out there and get a Garrett Riley with the kind of talent that you have at Oklahoma and what he did at TCU in that national championship run, you would still have one of the top 10 offenses in the country year in and year out. You could go out there and get a Ryan Grubb. You could go out there and get Bobby Petrino. Bobby Petrino develops quarterbacks really well at a high level. And listen, his offenses, they just don't seem to die. And then last but not least, Sean Lewis, right? He's been out there at Colorado, really wasn't able to do much. Unfortunately, just really bad offensive line, was never able to get that run game going. But we know that Sean Lewis has had a top offense in the country every single year 
that he was a head coach at Kent State and every single year that he was able to do other coaching jobs. So I, I look at it and I go, Oklahoma could be in good spot with any of those. I don't think they go after him. Now, Bill Beatonbow is also a potential prospect, but again, does Bill Beatonbow really want to go be an offensive coordinator? I don't know. This is going to be crazy if this is actually true. And he decides to take the Mississippi State head coaching job because Oklahoma is going to go into a bowl game where you're likely going to have Matt Wells and Seth Luttrell calling plays or even Emmett Jones, and they're all going to swap out, and they're all going to be interviewing for the job live. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that's going to work out. Maybe do we see a co-offensive coordinator scheme until somebody just sticks out the most to Venables? I'm not sure. But Oklahoma, they're going to be looking to add to their coaching staff even throughout the offseason, whether Levy's here or whether they're not, continuing to build up their stash of coaches, kind of like what Nick Saban out there at Alabama does. But I want to hear from you guys, and I want to hear what y'all's thoughts are, because the Jeff Levy rumors to Mississippi State, they're heating up fast. And, I mean, hey, Mississippi State was 5-7, and seven, sixth in the SEC West so far. They want to improve. They don't want to be the laughing stock anymore of the SEC West. They want to go out there and compete and be the number one ranked team. Like I think they were in, was it 2014 that they're ranked number one when they had Dak Prescott and Dan Mullen out there? So uh, if you're Oklahoma, and some of you fans, you might be excited that Jeff Levy might be moving on. I have a feeling a lot of you guys might be eating those words next season. But guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Join the discussion, guys. Let me know who you think should be the next offensive coordinator if Jeff Levy takes that head coaching job at the University of Mississippi State.